record this. Yeah. So um, basically the idea for this service is, is what we did for um, two services last month, which is just talk to people and, and ask the same, the same four questions and then take the, the conversations and turn them into something like a sermon. <laughs> and uh, and go with that. Um, so this week, uh, I've got a very um, sort of somber, it's been a year sermon. But, right. but then the, the following week, I think we're going to just kind of loosen up and say, all right, so, you know, what did we learn? What's this experience actually been like? Like, aside from the like weight of it having been a year, what was it actually right. like? What, what might it actually be? Um, right. And that optimism you were talking about, I think kind of helps put things in perspective. It's, it's, it's nice to hear a president talk and feel relief for a change, <laughs> and, you know, um, and not feel like, um, uh, are we going to get nuked? You know? Um, yeah, I, I missed his speech last night because I was doing Vespers. And, and so I was watching it this morning kind of in the background and he's just talking. And then, and then there's a line at about 11 minutes, 45 seconds of like the CDC is working on new guidelines for places of worship. And it went on for another 20 seconds. And I went, wait, 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 hang on. <laughs> <laughs> right. We pause that, back it up. Where's yeah. the transcript? Did he actually say that? Because... If he actually said that, that's a really big deal for us. <laughs> right. Um, right. Less of a big deal. And like, because 20 seconds later, he said the May 1st thing, and that's what all the headlines are. But um, anyway. That, that makes sense. I mean, not, not to compare people to cattle, but there is an understanding that once things open, people are going to, they're going to go places and congregate in tight spaces and churches are one of those places. So, I mean, that, that makes sense. Yeah, no, it's, and it's, it's a relief because, you know, politics aside, whatever his politics are, I do trust that if Joe Biden is giving a national speech and there's a line in there about the CDC studying something that at least a person or a team at the CDC is actually studying that thing. Like they've vetted the <laughs> true. True. I mean, we don't even know if the last guy could spell CDC. <laughs> um, so, um, <laughs> on that note, um, yeah, as, we can get all this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, as we're as we're thinking about um, the the year that we've had, is there a moment um, from from the last year at the at the church for you that represents what this experience has been like? As a whole. Yeah, I've been thinking about this a little bit. We, we had a, um, uh, an event around the 150th where we got together in groups over Zoom and different people spoke and different members of the staff kind of helped host. Um, and there were some crossed wires. There was some miscommunication about breakout rooms and things like that. And um, that, my point is it wasn't smooth sailing, but Regardless of that fact, we were able to uh, get things smoothed out, have the conversation that we were meant to have, uh, and things went smoothly from there. And I think that's a really good microcosm of the entire year in that nothing has been perfect, but everything has achieved what we set out to achieve. Um, it, it may have been a bumpy ride, but we did get information out to people. We did have services. We did have music. We did have conversations. And so... Uh, for me, I think that's, that's the event that kind of, it gave me a lot more hope for how the year was going to, to progress. If we had to keep staying online, people were really adaptable. And that was back in September, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what's a place that we've fallen short in the last year? I think this is a difficult one because I think that you can say something is successful and also that you've fallen short doing it. And I, I think for me, that is, that has to do with accessibility. Mm -hmm. um, 
making sure that everyone has access to a computer or a telephone or the internet speed to be able to stream the services. Um, early on, that was a lot more difficult and it's gotten a lot better. And I think we have been successful at communicating with folks. Um, but in a situation like this, you know, anyone who's left outside the circle, that's then we've fallen short. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of one of those, we're doing well, but it, we always need to be uh, addressing it. Yeah. Yeah. We talked about that at um, Worship Associates last night of, you know, how we think about the, the folks who have not been able to access our online stuff, you know, on, on one hand, that's a place where we've, we've failed. Um, and that's intimately tied up with, we can't gather in person. Um, and so if you sort of take that piece off the table, then it is an act of God and it's an act of God that has consequences that, right. that have been really hard. What's a, what's a success we've had as a church in the last year? I, if I was going to say uh, on, on a really technical level, I think we've gotten really, really good at this online thing. We've gotten very streamlined and putting it together and saying, you know, what is the format of the service? What are the hymns going to be? Who's going to do this part? Who's going to do that part? We've managed to incorporate a lot of extras, uh, the one fiftieth stuff. Um, it, it's, Early on, it was kind of formulaic, and, it, and it's become a lot more like a real Sunday service, where if something comes up on a Friday, it's not an emergency to, to put that in for Sunday. So the adaptability, I think, has been, been really, really successful in, in getting everything we need to get out out there to people in a way that's pleasing to look at. <laughs> you know, it, every service could be 10 YouTube videos you know, here's the intro, click on the next one, here's the hymn. And I think we've done a really good job of making it palatable for people who would much rather be in the building. Right. So this last question is, is really sort of the, the pivot that we're in right now, which is we've, we've learned a lot over the last year and we've had hard moments in the last year, but what, what do you see as opportunities emerging from this experience that we've had um, going forward? For me, um, especially in the music area, I think we have a lot more opportunities now for content creation because that's essentially what we've been doing for the last year. Since we're not in the building, we have to make everything. No one can come here and get it anymore. And so I think the opportunities to expand on that are pretty vast. I mean, we've talked about doing podcasts, um, a Street is recording things, albeit pretty slowly, but we have sort of tested the, the boundaries of our capabilities in terms of technology, in terms of putting out content, in terms of, you know, finding the, the resources and the people to, to do these things successfully. And I think, I think that will continue after we're in the building. I and mean, it was something we were already talking about. Um, but, you know, we, it's kind of been a blessing and a curse in that when we have to put on two services every Sunday in the building, everything takes a backseat to that. And so things happen at, at a much different pace than they have the last year. We were thrown into this kind of flipped over to, okay, instead of how do we do it online in the future, now we have to do it online for a year. So, mm -hmm. and then the, the other opportunity that I really see is, and, and I, 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 I sense this kind of unspoken kind of electric energy, especially among artists, is that when we're finally able to be out and in places, I think that it's just going to explode. Music venues, concerts, art galleries, things like that. It's kind of that situation if you don't know what you've got until it's gone. Mm -hmm. And I think people are going to be out and doing things. And, and as part of our mission to become more of a center of culture in the community, I think we can really take advantage of that. That is an exciting thought. Yeah, people are going to want to see things. They're going to want to yeah. do things. And um, in, in, in kind of a different correlation, um, Ashley got on this kick of asking me three or four times a day, 
to start a band. And she said, people are going to want to go and see music and you should start a band. And so, you know, I get home from the church. Did you start a band? Have you talked to anybody? And so there, there, and among other musicians, I feel that like people are going to go to a lot more gigs. Now they're going to try to book a lot more things. It's, it's, Mm-hmm. You know, when, when you're in it and you're doing, you know, 15, 20 gigs a month and, and it's, it, it is a job and it is a grind and now it's been taken away from us for a year. And right. so we appreciate it a lot more uh-huh. now that it's gone. So I, I, I think that's going to blow up. And I think that we can really, really use that to bring people into the building and to have things that benefit the city of Lincoln and hopefully beyond. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> that'll, be a fun, that'll be great for the, the service as well. Um, anything else that we want to touch on or add for, for the worship service in a, two weeks? I, the only thing I think I would add is that um, I would ask people to temper their expectations a little bit. Um, it's one thing to be in a room with people where one person is preaching a sermon. It's another thing to be in a room with people where multiple people are playing instruments or there's a choir singing. And so music wise church might look a little different for a little bit for safety reasons, but we're still going to have music in there. there. As long as I'm here, at least, and I'm sure you feel the same way, there's not going to be a church service that has no music unless it's like a silent meditation type of, but we're going to have it. It's going to be there. It just might look different for a little bit. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. There, There is a, it sounds like a dog apocalypse happening behind me. So I don't know how much the mic picked up, picked up, but I need to go check on that. Um, uh, so I'll, I'll work on editing this together with, with everybody else. I think I'm talking to Kelly this afternoon and then, uh, Chelsea on Tuesday haven't talked to haven't coordinated with Jean yet but we'll get this all into a, a cohesive reflection great sounds good yeah good luck with your uh, uh, tilting at the windmills of the saxophone community yeah I will it's a lot of screaming into the void but sometimes that helps yep all right be well have a good one <laughs>